Okay, so we are only doing one halakha on the Ramam in the Mishnah Torah today. Uh, I I must have read this in the past, but I totally didn't realize that the first time he mentions Lishma and Shalom Lishma is in Hilchos Talmud Torah Pera Gimel, a halakha He. So the main place where the Ramam talks about it is in his Hakdama de Perak Chelek, which he wrote before the Mishnah Torah. And that's what we're going to spend the bulk of the day or the entire day on, uh, maybe more than the day. And then the other main place in the Mishnah Torah he talks about it is in Hilchos Tshuva Perak Yud. I just missed this here. I, it's just so small, you know, uh, and uh, the context is strange. So we're going to like read it, note the strangeness of the context, but then go back to the Ramam's main discourse on it and then try to come back and answer this. That's the plan. Okay. Tchilas dino shal adam. Uh, so the beginning of a person's judgment. So I presumably this is the judgment that you get when you are judged for after death, I assume. I don't think this is talking about like on Rosh Hashanah Yom, Yom Kippurim. Um, Eno nidon ela aha tamud. He is only judged on Talmud. Now here, Talmud, I don't think means like Talmud as opposed to Torah Shabal Peh and Torah Shabal I think it means learning, you know, like he's talking about before Talmud Torah. The Achar Kach al Shar Masav, and then afterwards on the rest of his actions. Okay, so that's a very strange thing. All right, he's judged on his learning first and then on the rest of his actions. I mean, what does it even mean, Achar Kach? Like, do, do judgments occur in time? <laughs> you know, like, like, does it mean that the, the judgment on the actions is affected by the judgments on the uh, on the Talmud? You know, like, it's a big question here. And then Rav Makbili, uh, on the side, here you go, there's two copies here. Um, I decided uh, um, to go back to my practice of last year, which is starting on time, as soon as there are two people here. Um, yeah. Um, so, um, so we just read this first line on, on Gimel Hay, which is the beginning of a person's din is that he's only judged on Talmud and then afterwards on his other actions. And so the question is like, what does that mean? Okay. So look at the Rav Machbili footnote there on, uh, footnote Hay on the side. Uh, so, um, Talmud encompasses knowledge of Torah and then understanding it. Like the Ramam says in the Mor Nebuchim Gimel Nundalad, the Amru Od Chachamim Zal that the Chazal say Ki Adam Nitba Biadias Hatorah Tchila. So I think Nitba is like uh, held to account. Um, uh, I don't know exactly how to translate it, uh, like Tovea, you know. Um, a person is first held to account on the knowledge of Torah. The Achar Kach Nitba Bechachma. Then he is held to account for Chachma. Now I don't know what that is. Then he's held to account for that which is incumbent upon him from the laws of the Torah. Klomar, meaning to say, understanding what is proper to do. And that's the proper order. First to know the views through the Kabbalah, meaning through the uh, received tradition. So that sounds like knowledge based on authority. The achar kach lehochiach and then afterwards to prove them. So I guess that's what he meant by chachma to actually like prove them through your own understanding firsthand. The achar kach ledatek b'masi masher b'hem yutbu ha'halichos, and then to be pre- precise in actions through which you improve your goings. I don't know what he means there, and it might be worth it to take a look at that more in the later on. But but the, the reason I'm bringing this in now is it does seem like there is a thing of chronology of Talmud and then Ma'asav. And again, I don't know what that means in the framework of judgment. Like the, the way the Ram is defining it on the, in the Morna Vuchim excerpt there, that's in terms of the order of learning. But the way that the Ram puts it in the Mishnah Torah is in terms of how you're judged. And again, I, to my knowledge, there's no such thing as time in Olam Haba, you know? So, uh, so it's weird to say he, he's first judged on Talmud and then a Mase. Okay. But then is the most perplexing word of this entire thing. And again, this is the first time I'm, I'm, I'm realizing this question. The most perplexing word is lepikach. Therefore, back in the Mishnah Torah, Amr Chachamim, the Chachamim said, The person should always involve himself in Torah, even not for its sake, because from out of doing it for its sake, he will come to for its sake. So what's the lefikach? That based on how you're judged, then you should be involved in Torah Shalol Lishma because we talk Shalol Lishma Baal Lishma. I mean, first of all, the way the Ram is going to talk about Shalol Lishma and Lishma in Chelek and in the Hilas Tshuva, then it seems like an intrinsic good. The highest level of learning is to be involved in Lishma. So why are you making it a Lefikach off of how you're judged? Why is it all dependent on your judgment? Like, and if, if you were judged on your actions and then on your Talmud, would, would this not be true? Would you not 
be Osik Batora Lishma? Maybe it's saying that now it's not not Talmud, and and therefore and therefore it's judge like Kishar. Oh, that's interesting. Okay, that's a good shot, right? So uh, I think this is going to be borne out when we read it in the uh, in Chelak. But I, I think when people quote Lola Miyasu Adam Batora Afilu Shalashma Shemitok Shalashma Balashma, I think what they the way they think of it is you should be involved in it even for like less than ideal reasons because from doing it for less than ideal reasons you'll come to do it for ideal reasons. But they give a certain amount of like Hashivus to Lolashma, but. I think when you look at the Ramam and certainly the Chazal, they really seem to hold that learning Shalolishma as learning is completely valueless, except in the fact that they'll bring it to Lishma. Mm -hmm. So what you're saying is, Yosef, if I'm understanding you correctly, is that really the only, like the main din is on your learning and the only learning that's worthwhile is Lishma. So if you don't get to Lishma, then like you don't have Talmud in terms of for judgment purposes. Okay, Let, let's see if that shot holds up. That's definitely a reasonable uh, approach. Yeah, Chaim? Uh, I'm hearing everything. Uh, I need to learn everything. I don't really need to hear everything. You know, I don't really need to Talmud. Yeah, we don't understand that either. Yeah, that we don't understand that either. Yeah, right, right. The only problem is that he doesn't really explain himself, you know, right? Yeah, so th th that's why but that's why I think that our best bet, I mean, the Ram, I, I think, is quoting, a, a Chaz, well, he is quoting a Chazal. I mean, he says he's quoting a Chazal. Hold on a second. The, um, the Ram is quoting a Chazal, which um, talks about, like, what you're judged on when you die. I think uh, I think it's the one with the, uh, actually, I'm not sure if it, maybe there are multiple Chazals, but seeing as how we have had more experience talking about Lishma and Shalol Lishma, it might make more sense for us to reverse engineer it, you know? Yeah, and then work our way backwards, yeah. So that's, that's the approach we're going to try. Yeah, yes. Sir. Maybe you say with the Tal Mecharkach Shabbos that all the other actions besides your luring are judged with the free of reference of how, how cause you were detracted from your learning. So that mm. the would be of that the person who's involved in Torah Lishma is Lil Lishma is judged in reference to the fact that he's Lil Lishma. Uh huh. That's interesting. Well, just just let me just think about it for one second. Meaning that um, meaning that the the learn the act the Masa is judged in uh in in the framework of the Talmud and yeah. and, and in terms of and when you say uh, bring you to or, or or resulting from meaning that. You could be learning and the learning will lead you to action because that's what the Ram said earlier is Tom and maybe the day Misa. And then also the action is different when it's done out of knowledge and understanding rather than it's just done. No, okay. You meant the first one, but not the second one? Uh, or not those? The, the, your actions are judged by how much it caused you to learn. How much it caused you to learn. The only reason I went the other direction is because the Ram's in earlier in Talmud Torah, twice now, right, said, um, uh, wait, was it twice? No, once. Wait. Hold on. Yeah, yeah, twice, twice, right? Four. Said Talmud maybe did Masa and not Masa maybe did Talmud. So one is in Gimel Gimel. El Talmud Torah connected Kol Mitzvos Kulan Shah Talmud maybe did Masa, and then in Aleph Zion was it or Aleph um, Aleph Dalid? Yeah, Aleph Dalid. Um, no, Aleph Gimel. So that's why I'm saying in the Ramos framework, it seems like it's the other way around that since Talmud is maybe the Maise, so then Maise could be used as a measure of your Talmud. Um, and um, also, Masa done without Talmud is different than Masa done with Talmud. Maybe that's the same thing. Um. Uh, you mean right? Yeah. Yeah. Right. Well, I'll, I'll, the, the greatest support for your objection is the fact that the Ramam doesn't link them, right? The Ramam does not, like, it would have made a lot of sense to me if he went like this. Let's say he went Gimel, um, 
Where is it again? Gimel, Gimel. If he says, "In lecha mitzvah b'chol hamitzvahs kulan she shekula kenege talmud torah ela talmud torah kenege kol mitzvahs kulan she talmud mivi leimaisa lefikach tchilas dinu shal adam eno ela aha talmud v'afka ashar masa." That would fit in very seamlessly, right? The fact that he doesn't do that and he makes it a separate halacha to me indicates that there that it is not related. I was just bringing it in response to what Yosef was saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. but um, yeah. It's also funny. This is the other thing that like um. The way, if you read the Brahma, okay, I, okay, you know what? At, at the risk of of, uh, of opening up a can of worms here, um, let me get Mishnah Torahs for everyone. Um, I feel like we have a responsibility to look at something else before we go to the uh, Chuva Gimel. Here. Share the screen. Sefer Hamada, and it's the last section of Sefer Hamada. Uh, yeah, Gimel. Yeah, Gimel. Um, sure. Uh, this is Gimel. So this is in Hilchus Chuvah where he's talking about how a person is judged. Okay. Uh, let's look at Halacha Aleph. Um, Greg Gimel. Yeah. Each and every person has merits and iniquities. So someone whose merits uh, uh, are greater than his iniquities is a tzaddik. If it's the reverse, it's a Russia, and half and half is benoni. So then he says the Medina, and then he says the... Um, what happens, and then same thing with the world. Then he says, what happens if your uh, avonos are uh, greater than his Okay, but then in in the paragraph above Gimel, this weighing, okay, the weighing of the zechuyos and avonos, um, the weighing is in accordance, is not in accordance with the quantity of zechuyos and avonos, but it's in accordance with their magnitude, their degree. There can be a merit that corresponds to many avonos, as it says, uh, because there was something good found in him. Um, do you happen to know, Yosef, which king that was? Yeah. It was one of the kings who basically was a bad king, but he uh, he removed the roadblocks to the... Um, hold on just a second here. The to the to the uh, base of Mikdash, I think. Uh, I guess the uh, this was... Oh, it was the son of your Avam, I think. Yeah, yeah, it was the son of your Avam, I think. Maybe does that make sense? Because after the one who was killed and then became king, or the one who died as a I guess, well, it says, it's funny, because it says, Mesa Yeled, the soft little Koyis Rav Bukavro, so he's Elevado Yavel Ravam El Kever. This is the only one of the descendants of Yeravam who went to a grave. Yan Nimsabo Davar Tov, El Hashem El Kei Yisrael Beves Yeravam. Yeah, fine. So he did something good. Okay, so the proof is that you could be like in the total Russia, but if you but you could do one good thing that that uh, seems small, but it, like it was worth a lot. But then there's also you can have an avon that is corresponds to many zechios. One sinner can ruin a lot of good. Uh, these are only weighed in the mind of the god of Deos. And he's the one who knows how to weigh the zechios against the avonos. Okay. And then skip to this the paragraph after Gimel. And this is the only one I wanted to get to, but I wanted to get the background. So just like you are, your zuchiyos are weighed with your avonos at the time of your death, so to each and every year. Okay, stop there. So when the Ram in our halacha talks about the beginning of a person's din, first of all, I assume he's talking about at the time of death. Right. Not at the beginning of your din on Rosh Hashanah. I've just never seen anything about Rosh Hashanah din going by Talmud Torah first. And then the other thing is, he says that the uh, the zechios are are and avos are weighed based on the uh, magnitude. Now that might not be the same as the Talmud Torah terminology here of weighing, but it is interesting that it's going to turn out. I mean, I guess my question is like this. My question is. When the Ramam talks about din here in Tshuva, he's really talking about how God judges you. 
in Hillel's Talmud Torah Gimel, he taught, it's phrased in terms of how a person's judged, but I get the impression it's much more about how we relate to Talmud Torah, not about how you're judged. Otherwise it would be here. Like, in other words, I'm getting an impression, like this is where he goes into the, all, all, all of the, the stuff about how God judges the, you know, the, the person and whether they get Olam Haba or not. I, it's mashman to me that the fact that, 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 that the stuff about Tchilas Dinosha Adam is not here. And the Tchilas Dinosha Adam is in a paragraph that's all about how to get Torah. That is not even about how God judges you. You know, it's an idea about Talmud Torah. Is that reasonable? Am I being understood? <laughs> okay, now it's like this. Hilgos Tshuva Per Gimel is all about how God judges you, both in this world and in the next world. And the whole thing has to do with Olam Haba and what your chalik is and reward and punishment, right? So, and it's the mechanisms how he judges you. Like even in terms of he, judge, he forgives the first sin and then, and then there's the domino effect and then like you regret your mitzvahs. Uh, I mean, he gets it all from uh, Chazal, but it's also in light of the Ramam's theory of the soul and how Olam Haba works. So he has to work out a whole thing because it's not so clear that the Ramam's Olam Haba is like, you know, in line with all of what Chazal said about Olam Haba. Um, uh, what? No, it doesn't. Yeah, yeah. But, and then I'm saying though that in Hilchos, um, our halacha in, in Talmud Torah of Tchilas Dino Shal Adam, when you read it, it sounds like he's saying, this is how God judges you. I'm saying, I don't think it's how God judges you. I think if it were actually about how God judges you, put it in Hilgos Tshuva Per Gimel, or maybe in Per Ches, if it's about like, so what it, so what it is about is, is something about how you uh, acquire Torah, because the Perik is about Kenyan HaTorah, and, and, uh, and that's why it is a lefika. Meaning that we, wh why do we care about the Tchilas Dino Shal Adam? Not because that's what the soul is and not because you need to know these Yikarim, but because this is going to affect how you go about learning. <laughs> Say again? <laughs> I'm saying it seems like it's from the context of the Rambam. Yeah. Well, and the, the overall context the and then the localized right. context of the Fika. And, and Rav Mapili clearly thinks so, right? I mean, not, not that that's a riot for the Ramam, but Rav Mapili says that that the Ramam, what the Ramam is saying in the Mordevukim there about the order in which you should learn stuff, you know, learn the the beliefs of Torah, and then prove the beliefs of Torah, and then focus on your actions. You know, that's and, and he's saying the chain Roy Leos Haseder, that's dictating a Seder Halimud, you know, not a this is how God processes your soul when you die. That's the argument I'm making. He's saying it like this because I think he's basing it off of the Chazal that says how a person is judged, you know. And and, 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 and uh, yeah, meaning meaning like like for example, uh, like I'll give you an analogy, okay? And this. Is, oh, maybe that's true. I don't care about. Okay, for for what our for our purposes. I'm not talking about Chazal, man. I'm no, talking about Ram, man, right? Not, yeah. Not yeah, yeah. I'll give you, I'll give you an, I'll give you an example, okay? Is if you said, uh, if, if you were talking uh, to a college ad admissions person and asking about like your shots of getting to a college, and they said, okay, the first thing they're going to look at is your SAT scores, right? And they're not even going to consider your application if you don't have good SAT scores. So what that does is it's saying it, it, it is they're expressing it as the first thing that they're going to judge. But what it they what the guidance counselor means by it is functionally that's the thing you should prioritize in terms of what you're you're caring about, you know. Um, and uh, and in terms of olam haba, even so, you can even make okay. Maybe I can answer the question. Maybe the reason why Chazal phrased it in terms of olam haba is because let's say a person is 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 uh, is planning out their priorities in in, in life. And they need to figure out what is it that we are going to, um, uh, am I going to focus more on learning or am I going to focus more on action, you know? And really we say you should focus more on action, on learning for many reasons. But what this is saying is in terms of Olam Haba, in terms of your din, it's going to turn out better for you in terms of that also, you know? But what it's essentially giving you an idea about is, is how you should set up your, your curriculum, you know, your priorities. Does that make more sense? I kind of worked it out as I was talking about it. Like the, the, uh, the, there's a thing I saw, hold on, let me just pause something because I read this in Nefesh Rav over uh, Shabbos and it might be relevant. Give me one second. Okay, back to the recording. Yeah. 
So now, does this does this alone allow us to see at least what the Lefikov is in any sense? Oh, by the way, another thing also is um, while, while you have the Mishnah Torah there, can we just look at something real quick? We're not going to do this now, but just look at Hilcha, or you, you don't even have to look at it. I'll just look at it. Um, when he brings down the statement in Shuva, oops, uh, Yud, um, uh, Halacha, Perik Yud Halacha He. Yeah. Okay. So it is interesting because he also says, Lolam Yasa Adam Batora, Afilish Lolish Mashmi Tokshul Lolish Mashmi Tokshul Lolish Because this is the thing also is, you know, the way that it's commonly quoted is Yasa Adam Batora Uva Mitzvos. And I think in Hilkos Talmud Torah, the Ramam is definitely just talking about Torah itself. Yeah, yeah, it says that, yeah, but Torah and Mitzvahs, yeah, yeah. But just but Torah, yeah. Yeah, but I'm saying that it, it makes a lot of sense in Hilkos Talmud Torah that it's just but Torah because he's saying over, uh, over you know, uh, as opposed to action. Uh, they word it differently. Mm-hmm. in different places the only place i'm familiar with it from is in um they say it all over shas but it's not in avos is it if it is it must be the first pair really not should we talk about really if, if it's anywhere in avos it would be in the sixth pair which i don't know but oh no i mean i'm gonna do something else okay yeah um i know it's in midrash echa uh, that's the place I'm familiar with. And I just want to check and see if there are different gear styles there. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on it. Midrash Echa is Midrash Agada. Uh, Echa Raba. Uh, yeah. Rav Huna Amar Lamotor Afapi Shalolishma Shemitok Shalolishma Balishma. Yeah. Yeah, but there's a, there's a ton of places in Shas though. Yeah. Okay. So let us do this now. Let's go to the Raman and Chalik, okay? Um, and with with this in the back of our minds, we're trying to figure out how the uh, how it relates. And this is going to be. Okay, let's see if I could direct you how to get there. Um, it is on page Kuflam and Dalad in uh, in Sanhedrin, which is in the Zikin. So it's not just any Kuflam and Dalad. It's in the second half of the book, uh, Kuflam and Dalad. I'm going to pause this while. Okay, so um, what do you call it? Um, the context here is the Raman basically talks about how people have different views about what the ultimate reward and punishment are. And so he gives five views of people and I'll just summarize it really quickly because I didn't, uh, we're not gonna go through this whole thing. Um, the first view, actually we don't even need to go through those. Okay, it says there are five views and they're all wrong. And now you're on the left column on Kuvlam Dalet, okay? Um, but this wondrous point, Klomar, meaning to say, there's hardly anyone who even thinks about it at all. Now, this is something I, I, I've been curious about uh, historically. Okay, nowadays, if you go around, people talk about Olam Haba all the time. Now, what I want to know is the Ram is saying no one. He's going to say no one talked about Olam Haba. Okay, and I'm wondering it, how much the Rambam talking about it and making Ikarim and having people argue against the Ikarim got people to talk about Olam Haba more. Because if what he's saying is true, then it is astounding that no one talked about it. But he says, no one thought about it. No, sorry, talked about it. Um, or who thought about it, or who, or who uh, like analyzed this Yisod. We're asking what this terminology referred to. And the terminology he means is like Trias Amesim, Gan Eden, Brachos and Klalos. He's saying people just don't even ask about the terminology. Like, what, what are those things talking about? Or is this the, the end? Meaning, is Olam Haba the end that, that we're striving for? Or is one of these other prior views the end? Meaning, like, let's say, like, one of the views of, of uh, Mashiach time is Tzchiyas Amesim, you know, uh, or of the ultimate reward. And people thought that we're involved in this in order to get to Tzchiyas Amesim, you know. Whereas, let's say, in the Ramam system, Olam Haba is the end, and Tzchiyas Amesim is a means to the end, you know. So he's saying people don't even think about the, the difference between the end and the means. 
Oh, he says, yeah, Yavdiu bein atachlis bein asiba hamavila el atachlis. People do not differentiate between the end and the cause that brings you to the end. Vulatimsa klal misha shoa alze o madaber po. We don't find anyone who asks about this or talks about it. Okay, so it, it's astounding to me because you think that this is what people would want to talk about. <laughs> Yeah. Right. I think so. Also, right. Yeah. Yeah. Like say that people two hundred years ago talked about it. Two hundred years ago. Well, it, so apparently there was a. Uh, okay, I, I read this in. Okay, this is a theory. Okay, but uh, uh, the Abravano wrote a book called Rosh Amana. Okay, and it was a defense. With the secret critique of the Rambam, okay, of the Rambam Zikarim. He basically goes through all the objections um, against the Rambam Zikarim, and then he like ends up saying, yeah, the Rambam was right, but then he like has his own view and like his own twist on stuff. And there's an English translation of it by Menachem Kellner, and Menachem Kellner says, and I, I, I saw this earlier in the year, but I don't know verbatim, that basically the Abravanel put to rest the question of the Ikarim as things that people talked about um, for like entry into Olam Haba until the reform movement started, you know, and, and that was because that it became a different matter to say like, who is considered like a mom in and who's not, you know? So, uh, so 200 years ago, sounds like that's when it started a resurgence according to him. Again, I'm not saying this based on firsthand knowledge, but it sounds like like the Rama had his thing. There was an explosion of Rishonim, like arguing with Rama or whatever. The Abravanel probably in the mid 1500s, like wrote this book and then the discussion quieted down. Yeah. Yeah. Or he's always like, do this discussion, like, I just want to find the religion only comes out on the idea of there being a specific religion which requires a being very integrated into this, like, into the, I guess, non Jewish society, or such that, say, the Gemara's time or the, or the Ashkenazim of the time, you just like, it, the whole thing is the whole thing. There's no uh, need to find against something else. Mm -hmm, right, Which right. Didn't say, right. And then once we had in our own people the need to define it, yeah. Within our people, then yeah. that became a thing. Yeah. yeah. And also, just in the Roman service, like a much more Christian piece of order. I just pull you in, in uh, like tonight, times where you have the people who did think about it, aka the Christians. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. That that, that makes sense. Yeah. But the, I think, if I remember correctly, the thing that Menachem Kellner was saying is like, if you look through like Shilas and Shuvos in terms of like who to count for a minion, I think like of of of, of posting at that time, just no one brought up Ikarin, you know, uh, between like the Abravanel and like eighteen hundreds. So, um, yeah. Which is not a very long time. It's like 300 years, but still, you know. Okay, so Ella, so what do people ask about? And this is still true. All people, the Yechidim, by which the Ram means like scholars, and the Hamonim, the masses. How are people going to get up from Tukhiyas Mesim? Naked or dressed? People are, when people get up, if they're clothed, are they going to be in the clothes that they were buried in? And is it going to have like their perfume? And is it going to have like the, the jewelry? And is it going to have like the nice stitching embroidery? Or are you just going to have a plain garment alone? Okay. I can testify that whenever Olam Hava came up in high school, high school girls ask questions like this. <laughs> okay. But apparently it's not just high school girls. It's Yechidim and Hamonim also. Right. Um, uh, or you know what the one people love to ask about is if you were married and then your wife dies and you get remarried, and you, get, and you come back, who are you going to be married to? Or like, who, who's going to be like, you know, what's going to happen? Oh, because there's going to be bottle, yeah. Maybe the reverse size is better, yeah, right. That makes more sense, right? That's a, that's, that, that puts you in a, a, a tough position. Because you're Yavu HaMashiach, Ha'im Yishveh Ben Ha'ashir V'Ha'ani, Oshi Hei Biyama V'Chazak V'Chalash. Basically, is, uh, is Mashiach going to equate, is he going to... Um, tax the rich <laughs> no is he gonna make yeah right is he gonna make the uh, equation between the rich and the and the poor uh, and between the weak and the strong or not and many other questions about this when he says eating krobos i think he means about like contemporary things meaning like things that people are interested in now you know yeah so that's i want to I, yeah right Right. There are some. Right. Or like how will Yahoo get into Right. Yeah, but I think what he's criticizing is the fact not that there are like there, yeah, there are questions 
even important questions, let's say like the base of Mikdash, like how do you reconcile Yechezkel's third bias design with like the actual halakha, you know, but what he's saying is like the fact that no one, everyone is striving for the ultimate reward and people are not asking about what it is or what its relationship is to all the other stuff. That's, that's the overall context. Now I thought about not reading that because it doesn't seem to have to do with Lishma and Shalolishma, but he then goes into Lishma and Shalolishma in order to answer that question. So I thought it'd be responsible to at least read that paragraph. Okay. Ready for Lishma and Lishma? Okay. Ready or not, here it comes. Yeah. Uh, he says, <laughs> he doesn't say, right? Because he says, and you, the one who's like investigating this topic, listen to me for this muscle and then pay attention and listen to everything that I'll say on this topic. So to really answer this, we'll need to see, we will need to do all of Halek, which we're not going to do now. But um, but I thought, it, what was that? I would love to do all of Halek, but it's really long, you know. Uh, that's like what Rupesak spends a whole year on on uh, on the Tuesday night here. So you know you could listen to that. Um, but uh, okay, but we'll. But I just want. I felt like I had to give the the preface here. All right, right. Nania. Um, can you just be a little bit quieter with the drumming? Thanks. Um, uh, so assume or or or, or let, it, let it be said. Shenar Tsair, a young lad, Huchnas Etel Mechanech Lulam Do Torah is uh, is you know put in under the uh, training of a teacher to teach him Torah. And this is a great good for him. Because of the perfection he's going to get from it. Okay, fine. So he's going to get a good perfection, and that's the good. But because of his young age, now I'm going to translate as uh, his, his, uh, his immaturity. Okay, literally means the lack of his das, but das, remember, can mean knowledge or, or psycho like psyche. I think here it means psychological maturity. Okay. Well, it's a combination. I'll just say maturity because of his immaturity. Lo yavin erech oso hatov. He does not understand the value of that good, of the good of human perfection. Lo mashi yavi lo And he doesn't realize the perfection. Sorry. He doesn't realize the worth of that good of learning, nor does he understand the good of the perfection that will come to him from it. Vine ha hechreach mebi es hamalameshu mushlami meno. And necessity brings the teacher who is more perfected than he is, Lazarzo Ahalima, to motivate him for the learning. Badavar Hakaviv Allah Mahmas Gilo Hatsari, to motivate him using something that is beloved to him based on his young age. Yomarlo, so he'll say to him, Lamed Vetin Laha Egozi Motanim, learn and I'll give you nuts or figs. Every child's favorite treat. Oh, Etain Laha Khatika Sukar, I'll give you a, a chunk of, 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 of sugar, right? Candy. The Oz, yeah, that's the third favorite. Yeah. The Az then Yilmod Vishtada Lola Etzem Halimod, he will learn and strive not for the learning itself, Lafisha Eno Yodea Lze Erech, because he doesn't know the value of it. Ella Kidel Hasik Oso Ovo, but just to get that food. The Achilos Oso Hamachal at Slo Yoser Hashu Minalimod Vyoser Tovali Safe. And that eat the eating of that food to him is more important than the learning, and, and it is better without a doubt. Lafika Khoshiv. Who as a limon amel via gear, she who amel bo, kveshiasi, boso amel, osa hamatara, hachaviva alav, the he egos echad of I love the way the Ram talks about this. That therefore he will think of the learning as a toil and exertion which he needs to toil in in order to attain through his toil that one goal which is more precious to him, which is one nut or one piece of candy. Okay, fine. So that's stage one is the candy stage. Okay, this is not rigidly developmental. Okay, but he's giving in the Ramos Marshall, there's, there's uh, several stages. So at the candy stage, once he grows up and his intellect becomes stronger, and then that thing that he used to treat as important becomes lighter in his eyes than, uh, than, than it was before. Then he'll go and attach value to other things. We will motivate him using that thing which is more precious in his eyes. And his teacher will say to him, uh, Learn and I'll buy you uh, nice shoes. Or a uh, uh, designer uh, garment. Then he will learn, not for learning itself, but for that garment. Uh, that begit is more precious to him than the learning. And it is the purpose of learning. 
that's where he introduces the word tachlis. Because ta da, so that's stage two, clothing stage. Because ta dato yoser shlema, when his mind becomes more perfected or more mature, viyakel be'in of davarzeh, and th that thing becomes light in his eyes. Mishadlim also b'meshu yoser mizeh. We motivate him with what is uh, with what is greater than this. Biomer lo melamdo. His teacher says to him, lamed parshazo o perek zev etem lachad dinar o shnei dinarim. Learn this perek or this uh, uh, or or this parsha, and I'll give you a dinar or two dinarim uh, money. Um, then he'll learn to get the money. Um, and the, the acceptance, the receiving of the money to him is more uh, uh, worthwhile than the, uh, than the learning. Uh, because the purpose of the learning to him is the receiving of the money that was promised him, right? Because with money, you can buy all the candy and shoes and clothing that you want. Okay, now the last phase. Before the end, the kasher yihe bal hakara yoser when he becomes more of a uh, a, a possessor of recognition, the yakel beinav gam hadavarze and that also becomes light in his eyes. Vieda shu davar pachos erech and he knows that it is something of little worth, meaning money. Mishalim also b'meshu yoser kasher we motivate him with what is more precious to him, uh, important to him. The omrim lo and we say to him lamed learn kadeshitihe rav b'dayan she learns that you could be a rabbi or a judge. People will honor you. And they will stand up in front of you in your presence. And your words will be established. Your uh, reputation will grow during your lifetime and after your death. Like Rav Moshe, right? Like the Rav. Um, you use examples. Then the guy will learn and strive in order to achieve that level. And the purpose to him of the learning will be so that people will honor him, and people will raise him up, and praise him. Okay, now here comes the Ramam's pivot. All of this is disgusting. Okay. Ella. <laughs> But we need it because of the, 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 the frailty or pathetic nature of man's psyche or das or mind. That he makes the purpose of the learning something other than the learning. The Yomar, and he says, Why should I learn this, the, be involved in learning this learning? only in order to achieve something which in reality is a fantasy, okay? That's what Shalolishma means, that you're learning, you're making the learning, the purpose of the learning something other than the learning, and it's really to achieve some fantasy, okay? Kolomar, um, Shuhum uh, Mitzvos, okay, this is the difficulty, he brings in Mitzvos now, <laughs> means that he fulfills the Mitzvos, the Ose Osam, and he does them, the Lomid, and he learns, the Mishtadel, and he strives, not for the sake of the thing itself, but for the sake of something else. Uh, and the sages warned us about this, Mizev, Amru, and they said, don't make them into a crown to, to glorify yourself with, or an axe to dig with, or a shovel to dig with, or an axe to chop with, no, axe to shovel, shovel to dig with. So what does the crown mean? Don't make the purpose of your learning that people honor you. Uh, it's funny, by the way, that we talk about the Kesher Shal Torah, like that's the muscle that's used. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. And not for the acquisition of money. Don't make the Torah of Hashem into a livelihood. Okay, here comes the grandest line in the entire Pirish of Mishnayos, in my opinion. The the purpose of the learning should be nothing other, other than knowing it alone. The only purpose of truth is to know that it is true, meaning truth is an end in and of itself. And then he throws in the problematic line that causes consternation every time we go through this. The hamitzvos ms and the mitzvos are true. And therefore, their purpose is their fulfillment, which Rav Pesach revisited this last year right before the rafting trip. I think, and gave a really good new level understanding of this, but I don't know it enough to say it. And I want to go back and listen to it again. I don't even know where it was. I think it was on a Tuesday night here, but it was off topic, but I highly recommend listening to that. Um, but yeah, that's the, in talk this MS, L Dashu MS. Oh, that was my moment one time. It was what? Mobile? Oh, okay. Interesting. We have a lot of questions.
Oh, okay. All right, good. Yeah, yeah. That was really worthwhile to listen to. That, that, that definitely leveled up my understanding. Um, but for our purposes, again, the purpose of truth is only to know that it's true, and then the mitzvahs are true, and therefore their, their purposes are their fulfillment. And I think that's what the that's what Ashir focused on, right? Is the the purposes of fulfillment? Like, what is that? Like, up until now, the Ramam has been saying that you know, talking about knowledge and learning, and yeah, I can understand the idea that learning for its own sake, but mitzvahs are a means to an end. You know, mitzvahs are there to perfect you, you know, or or whatever. So saying that the mitzvahs are true. I mean, what does it mean the mitzvahs are true? And what does it mean their purpose is their fulfillment? So uh, we can talk about that if we're interested. But the Asr la Adam, but I kind of want to get through the facts today. The Asr la Adam Hashan, this is the instance of, uh, oh, this is on Friday. Then Mayor was asking me, where, where's the Ramam? Use the word Asr, but he doesn't really mean it's Asr. Um, yeah, you were there at that uh, time. Uh, yeah. Oh, and I found. I'm curious, I asked for you. Well, okay. He said he doesn't know. Okay. Yeah. So I found examples of it on on Shabbos, um, but uh, uh, but I don't want to get into that right now. But here's a case: the Asr la Adam Hashalim. It is Asr for a perfected person, Shiomar, to say, "Ima sisi Elo Atovos." If I do these good things, when I'm not in Elo Haraus, and I I refrain from these bad things, Shehis Yerushem Mehem, that God prohibited me from, Vamehihe Gmuli. What will my reward be? Lefisha Zehu Kamosh Yomar Hanar. That would be like if a kid said, "Im lamarti ma yinasinli." If I learn, what are you going to give me? And then you say, oh, such and such. Because once we see, so we answer the kid, because once we see his immaturity, his lack of uh, uh, in his mind, he doesn't understand the worth of this thing. And he's looking for a purpose for the purpose. He's looking for an end for the end. I mean, he's looking to make the means, he's looking to make the end into a means to another end. We answer him according to the value of his foolishness. As Shlomo Melech says, answer a fool according to his foolishness. Yeah. Um, the, my two favorite examples of this in uh, from other Chachamim are uh, in Rabbi Chait's uh, Chalik Shirim uh, in the TTL. He says, if you went up to a, 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 a like a businessman who is like, whose goal in life is to make money ostensibly and and he he uh, and you're doing a deal with him, and he says, uh, "What am I going to get if I um, if uh, if this deal goes through?" And you say, "Oh, a million dollars." And he says, "Yeah, but if I get the million dollars, what are you going to give me? A candy bar? I'm going to get a candy bar if I make a million dollars?" You'd be like, "This guy doesn't understand how money works," you know? Like he's you know the point of money. Like if for a person like that, money is what you're trying to get, you know? So if he's taking the money and saying, "If I get the money, then you're going to give me a candy bar," he clearly doesn't understand the value of money. Whereas let's say you had a person who is from a society where there is no such thing as currency and you give them pieces of paper with Ben Franklin on it, then they're going to say, well, what can I get out of this? And if you give them like a candy, it's going to be worth more than the money, you know? So like, if you don't understand the thing, then you're not going to, you know, then, then, then that is slow lishma. The other favorite example I have is the Malbim in Eov 30. <laughs> uh, I don't know which one it is. Uh, I can say, it. I don't know, I should say, because I'm going to have to cite the sources anyway. Just give me a second here. Um, well, in fact, while I look here, I can actually like read it in English. Malbim Hashgacha. Um, so the Malbim on EO one, nope, 35, uh, eight through 14 says, so he's talking about reward and punishment here, which we're going to get into in the Rambam. He says, um, uh, this is a Pasuk in EO that, that where uh, Elihu is telling him, your wickedness only injures someone like yourself. The wickedness that you commit Oh, sorry, I'm not sharing the screen, am I? Hold on. Um, he says, uh, the wickedness you commit that harms others only injures another human being like yourself, but does not affect God at all. Similarly, the evil that man does to himself is damaging only to him. In the same vein, your righteousness is helpful only to another human being. That said, how can you seek out extrinsic reward from Hashem for this or request that he intervene in a particular... Oh, there's a typo here or meet out punishment to the Russia. To demand this would be to suggest that man's actions benefit him or harm him. Now here's the, here's the mushal. This may be compared to the following. An ill patient doesn't seek out a reward from his physician in payment for obeying his instructions to safeguard his health, nor does the physician punish the patient, patient if he fails to heed his warnings, for the reward and punishment are consequent upon the action itself. If he obeys the physician's instructions, he will be healed from his sickness, and that is his reward. If he doesn't obey, he will die, and that is his punishment. The reward and punishment are not meted out by the physician, but by the patient himself. That's one of the best mashalim I have seen for uh, scar bonish. <laughs> okay, so for real scar bonish, not brachos and klalos. So that's what the Ramam is saying here. That with a kid, if the kid says, "What are you going to give me if I learn?" 
then the kid doesn't realize that the real reward is the actual knowledge and the perfection. And he's looking for a tachlis for the tachlis. Right. Yeah. <laughs> the Ramam you're saying? No, he hasn't. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, correct. Yeah. So, so I, I think so. Based, I mean, look, based on, well, you're talking about the profession in general or about a particular mitzvah. Okay. Right. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. So l l I, I do want to discuss what that is because you're right. We have to understand that in order to get a full answer. But I, I do want to get through the facts today and then analyze tomorrow um, or whenever, hopefully tomorrow. Uh, uh, gam And the Chachamim also warned about this saying, They warned you not to make the, per the end of your avoda and the fulfillment of the mitzvahs any one of the things, meaning worldly things. <laughs> we need to create an acronym for that. You know, like people have all those like uh, change of letters. Hey, uh, hey, mem, hey. That's a good one, right? Antignos uh, isoho. Do not be like servants who serve their master to receive prizes, but be like uh, a servant who serves his master with the intention to not receive a prize. Yeah. Uh, oh, for Picavas. Yeah. Good call. Yeah. So that is the reference. Yeah, you're right. Um, and what does this mean? Now, this is another bizarre phrase. What do they mean by this? to believe in the truth for the truth itself, for the, for the essence of the truth, for the sake of the truth. And this is what they call one who serves God out of love. It says in Tehillim, yeah, Tehillim 112.1, um, that he desire, this man desires God's mitzvos. Amar Rabbi Elazar, uh, it says he desires his mitzvos, not the reward of his mitzvos. Um, meaning the mitzvos themselves. How great is this proof and how clear it is. This is a great proof on what we have uh, prefaced with our words. I, 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 does he mean that one memra of the mitzvos of his mode? I guess so, right? Not all that stuff. But greater than that is Amram Balashan Sifre. Shema Tomer Harini Lamator Bishvilsh Ehye Ashir, Bishvilsh Ekre Rebbe, Bishvilsh Ekabaskar Bolam Haba. Maybe a person will say, I'm going to learn Torah so that I can be wealthy. Uh, I guess he didn't read the other Ramah. <laughs> um, or so, so that I should be called Rebbe, or that I will get reward in Olam Haba. Tamad Lomar Le'ava Hashem. The Torah says to love Hashem. Koshatem Osim Lotasu Elame Ava. Everything you do, you should only do out of love. Pause here for a second. This is another question. It's funny how there's this overlap between Oben Me'ava and Lishma because they don't necessarily go hand in hand, I don't think. Like, Ava Sashem is a very high level. Is all Lishma equal to Ava, or can you have a Lishma that's not quite the level of Ava? I don't know. Just it's funny that there are two terms that mean the same thing. You know, what's the relationship? Or why is, if they are the same, then why do we use one in one way and one in the other way? If you were to donate this, would you still want to uh, right, right. That is a good question. Also, just to clarify, uh, clarify our idea of what lishma is. You know, um, that was um, what was the story? Oh, damn, I'm forgetting the story now. I don't remember what it is. Okay, fine. I'll have to ask someone. Hine nisbar zeh ha'inyan nisbar shu mataras mitzvos v'isod emulas chachamim. Uh, it's been clear, clarified, uh, this idea has been clarified, and it's become clear that this is the goal of the mitzvahs and the foundation of the, the, the belief of our sages. The only person who will uh, be oblivious to this is a fool and a simpleton. The only person who's going to miss this is a, a gullible fool who is already being corrupted by fantasy-based ideas that are insane and and inferior imaginations. Okay, just really throwing all the, the rotten tomatoes at this guy. Um, 
Vizohi Ma'alas Avram Avinu, and this is the level, not the last thing we said, but the higher level, is the level of Avram Avinu, Shaya Oven Mi'ava, who uh, uh, serve God out of love. Valder Hazo Chova Lishov, we are obligated to um, yearn after that derech. But since the Chachamim knew that this was very difficult, that this idea is very difficult, and not every person can attain it, meaning he can't understand it, okay? Not that he can't attain it. Obviously, it's hard to attain, but he's saying that not everyone can understand it. And if they understand it, it will not be correct in his eyes at first glance, it will not appear to him to be true, okay? Because the way of a person is that he only does an action to attain a benefit or to prevent a harm. And if not, then his actions will be in vain for no reason. How can you say to a Torah observant Jew, how can you say to a Torah observant Jew, do these actions not out of fear of punishment and not out of hope for reward? This is very difficult. Because not every person can grasp the truth and be like Avram Avinu. So I remember Pesach pointing out the first time I learned this with him, or he learned, he taught this to us. It's funny because he went a couple sentences ago. He said, the only person who misses this idea is a pathetic, you know, uh, immature fool who has been corrupted by false ideas. And now he's saying, no, not everyone can even grasp this idea, you know, and it's very difficult to even understand. <laughs> so that could be the way to say it. That could be, that could be, yeah, that's funny. Uh, that could very well be. Uh, the easiest uh, solution is that. The second easiest solution is to say that uh, he means um, uh, that ultimately, like, like, like the only person... Like every person can get this idea, but only after a lot of time. And the other person who's going to reject it entirely is someone who's like a fool who's been corrupted by uh, by these views. Um, and this is the most, um, uh, okay, I'm going to pause this. I'm recording, yeah. Therefore, they permitted the masses to yish'aru, to remain, kafida'atan, with their opinion, their view, to do the good in hopes of reward, and to distance themselves from the evils out of fear of punishment. And they encouraged them in this. And they reinforced their, their thoughts in this, meaning the masses, the Chachami did this to the masses. Until they will understand, um, until the understander, the apprehender will apprehend, and he'll know the truth and the perfected path, mahi, what it is. Just like we tell the youth, bisman halimud, at the time when he's learning kafi um, uh, based on the mashal that we said, and they were mahi, meaning they were strict with the antignos. Who the Ram just praised for being so like in line with the truth, Al Shapirsim Bahamon Ma Shapirsim, on the fact that he publicized for the masses what he publicized. Bamru saying, so this is what they said about Antigonos. Um, I gotta look this up to read the full quote because it's very, uh, very harif. 111 in Avos. Um, 111. Um, uh, Avtalian Omer, Chachamim Hizahu Bidibrechem, Chachamim, be careful with your words. Shema Tachobu Chovas Galos. Maybe you will incur uh, exile, liability of exile. The Tiglu Limikom Hamaim Harayim, and you will be exiled to a place of bad waters. The Yishtu Hatamidim Habaim Acharechem Yamusu. And the students who drink, uh, who, who, uh, who and the students who come after you will drink and they will die. And the name of uh, heaven will be desecrated. And again, that's what happened to Antignos is his two students, um, Tadok and Baisos, inferred from what he was saying that, that they said, our master saying, don't serve God to receive reward. There must be no reward. And then they went off and denied Olam Haba and denied Torah Valpeh and founded their own heretical sects. You know? So he, uh, he you know, had a bad consequence from revealing this to the masses. Okay, and he says, And the masses don't lose out entirely from serving God, from fulfilling the mitzvahs out of fear of punishment and hope for reward. They're just not perfected. 
It's better for them in this way. So that they acquire a disposition and a preparation for the fulfillment of Torah. And then they will transition to the truth. And then they will serve God out of love. Uh, and that's what the Chazal said. When he said, that a person should always be involved in Torah, even Shalolishma, because from Shalolishma, you'll come to the Shema. Yeah. Are you going to ask the question? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh. yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. On one hand, I had no sense in the Hamon. Yeah. Yeah. Like, oh, and, like, and, 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 yeah. And, like, and, 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 yes. Yeah. So, so the, let's frame that as one question. Okay. One question is what exactly does he think about the Hamon in relation to this idea? Because sometimes it seems very pessimistic and sometimes very optimistic. Yeah. yeah. Isn't this also written in like, Arabic as in a masculine. Yes, thing. that was the that was my that was my question, which is he's he's talking about the Hamon as though they're not here, <laughs> but he wrote this in Judeo Arabic so that not maybe not the Hamon Hamon, which you could like the 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 the, the Ami Arts and Nashim Katanim are not learning this, but it is people who are not Yechidim. It is like people who are like reading books in you know. What's wrong with, that? What's wrong with what? No, I'm not Yeah, yeah, right. That, so that that's my my problem is like. And that, that connects to your first question, which is, what does he expect the Hamon to get when they when when the Hamon to get when they read this? You know, and again, the the, the the shocking statement to me is telling the masses that that you will get reward for doing that that you should do the missiles for reward is like telling the kid to learn and I'll give you candy. You know, and he says, and we let them have this belief and we encourage them in this. Now, the thing is, is like this, is the Ramam is going to go on later on in Perichelic to say there is real reward, which is Olam Haba, but it's just we can't understand it, right? Um, so that's not what we're telling the, the Hamon about. And then there's also real brachos and klalos, but he says that's not the ultimate reward, you know, because it's just hashgacha to facilitate it. So, so the funny thing is, it's like this, you actually do give the kid the candy, okay, right? So it's not, the Ramam is not denying that there is candy here, okay? There is candy, which is rain in its proper time, and uh, and like you know protection from our enemies, but the 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 <laughs> yeah doing it for that is is really a falsehood. But we only tell them that, and that's ane kasil ki ivalto. He says we answer a fool according to his foolishness, you know. And again, and we do that with a kid. It's clear th- that that hey kid, learn and you'll get candy. And we encourage him to think that the candy is worth more than the learning. He's saying that's what Chazal did with the masses here. So again, I don't want anyone to like listen to this and think that there's no <laughs> there's no uh, scarf owners because again, that's one of the Ramam Zikarim. And Hilos Chuva Periches is all about Olam Haba, and Periches is about Brachos and Klolos, which facilitate Olam Haba. But the Aneik Sil Kivalto is letting people think that you should serve God to get reward. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so so we. No, yes, that could be part of the Brachos. So we have our work cut out for us. We, we, let's just outline the issues. So we have our first question, which is. What does the Rama mean in the Mishnah Torah of the beginning of a person's judgment is for the learning and then the actions, and therefore you should always be involved Then we have the question basically of what is Lishma by learning and what's Lishma by mitzvos? Gener- generic question. Third question is the relationship between Ovid Me'ava. Third question, relationship between Ovid Me'ava and Lishma. Fourth question is what exactly does the Rama expect of the Hamon and what is that transition process going to look like? Um, when you say you want with mine, yeah, yeah, the 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 when you talk to them with Ladash and how that makes sense, yeah, what the Shlemus is, yeah, yeah, okay, stop here for today and hopefully tomorrow, but we'll see how I'm feeling. I'm like, thank you.